What happens when a worldwide pandemic shuts down all sports? Well, you invite some of the biggest names across motorsports, including real life drivers, some of the top esports drivers, your favorite content creators, and even a real Madrid goalkeeper for a Clash of the Titans style race. But who will take the glory? This is not the Oz GP. The coronavirus pandemic opened up a new front today with more of the world's biggest sporting contests cancelled or postponed. As we've just heard, it is a very fluid situation with the coronavirus, which has forced the cancellation of the Australian Grand Prix. And welcome to Not The Oz GP, the very special event which has replaced the Australian Grand Prix, unfortunately, with the situation that has been going on around the world. So, instead, we have managed to gather a massive amount of superstars for a very special race for you guys. I'm your host for today, Hayden Guys, and joined with me in the commentary box is the very own Matthew Gallagher. Hello, Matthew. Welcome. Hello. Are yeah, you? Thank you. It's awesome. <laughs> are you excited for what has got to be one of the strangest races you've ever commentated on i mean you've done a few in the past hello yeah look, it's gonna it's, yeah it's gonna be a completely strange race i i, I can't believe you know it's quite sad that the uh, formula one isn't happening uh, this weekend but uh, what an what an amazing way uh, to fill that void in our hearts that we currently have I mean, if you just look at some of the names that we've got, uh, got coming into today's race, we've got uh, F1 drivers, ex-F1 drivers, up-and-coming junior drivers. We've also got content creators. Uh, and surprisingly enough, we have the Real Madrid number one keeper of uh, Thibaut Courtois, which has got to be one of the weirdest names uh, that we've ever had uh, in a racing series. But we're going to go with it and we're going to see how well he does. Yeah, this is honestly one of the strangest lineups I've ever seen in my entire life. But it's gonna it's gonna cause some absolute carnage. We're gonna see some amazing racing at the front. I kind of feel like it's almost a tale of two halves here. We've got the esports drivers, the ones that are on this game all the time, and then you've got some other more, let's say, relaxed drivers that will be looking to try and maybe score a few points at the back end of the top ten. Yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see. I mean, it's most likely gonna be the esports drivers running away from it. But to run you through the formation of today's race, so we're gonna be having a short qualifying. Uh, session to start off with before getting into a full 50% race. We've got default setups on, uh, automatic ERS management. We've also got track limits on regular, uh, full damage, and it will be taking place on the Codemasters F1 2019 game. I mean, looking at some of the assists and stuff, there'll be a few people complaining that uh, we haven't got the hardcore sim racing mode. But when you've got someone like Will and E joining the pack, uh, you kind of got to have uh, a bit of leeway for people like him, don't you? Oh, I mean, savagely just bringing out Will and E on this one. But um, <laughs> there are a few, as I say, more casual uh, races in this race. But that's the whole thing. It's, it's making sure that it is as accessible as possible for, for what is a pretty awesome event. We've obviously already seen one uh, earlier on today. We've got another one. The amount of entertainment is actually sort of <laughs> almost more than the real life Formula One season at the moment. So I'm not saying I'd rather this you know take place of it, but it's nice to have that additional racing. You've got so many, you know, there's so many fans watching at the moment that, you know, they, they might you know, be supporting Jimmy Broadbent, who didn't have a great race earlier. Maybe he can have a better one today. But it's, it's awesome to see everyone just come together uh, for this Not the Oz GP. Not the Oz GP, indeed. I mean, yeah, the, the, the numbers and the names of the people that we've got together, uh, probably way over the 5 million uh, subscriber and follower mark, which is incredible to see. So we've got a lot. We've managed to pull in our weight. Uh, three days ago, I think this idea started from a little joke uh, in the office and then uh, it sort of spiralled into what has been this amazing event where we've got people like Lando Norris, Stoffel Van Dorn, uh, Esteban Gutierrez, uh, Tivico Courtois. We'll go through the full grid later on uh, in the in the stream. Um, but uh, who are you most excited to really watch and who's going to really catch your eye? 
Uh, I haven't seen Jimmy Broadbent on Formula One 2019 too much. He's more of a hardcore sim racer doing the iRacings and the R Factors. So I'm actually really intrigued to see where he stacks up against the the best in the world. I don't think he'll be beating F1 esports drivers, but uh, I'd like to see where 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 he comes. And you know, <laughs> I'm rooting for people like Will and E. Obviously, you just savagely called him out, but I'd like <laughs> to see him not finish last. I think he, <laughs> we spoke to him before we went on stream, and he did say that he would like to finish. I don't know when it's going to be back, but. Uh, I mean, it's good news for people like you and me. We can entertain people instead by doing stuff like this. Absolutely, and I can now see what's going on. So let's... Oh, okay, so in qualifying, everyone's got it at the moment as well, but Jano Watmir on pole with a 119.3. Yeah. And then you've got uh, Danny Beresnay just behind two tenths. So, yeah, they're in the 119s. Who's last? Sasha, Will and E is not last. Will and yes. E is not last. Get in. Go on, lad. Oh, Super GT and Jimmy Broadbent bringing up the field there in 17th and 18th at the moment. Yep, okay, so Simon Vigang in fourth. So you've got Renault 1 4 at the moment. Tom 97 HD, pretty decent in fifth, 119.8. So you've got seven people in the 119s at the moment. We're finally getting stuck in with this now. So uh, apologies for the for the lag, the, the delay, and, and, and things like that. But it looks like we are finally getting stuck in now. All 20 cars are in this qualifying session. Will and E is now unfortunately last, but hey, he's done a 122.3, I believe. So. Yano has left the session, which is slightly concerning. Maybe he's just so confident with that 119.3. But Lando still there. Yep, Yano's back in, so that's good. Lando Norris, eighth, 120.3. So all the Lando Norris fans out there, very happy indeed. Thibaut Courtois down in 15th. Maybe the pressure is getting to him. 14th now as Gutierrez has been disqualified. Hmm. Not entirely sure what's happened there as we're following the McLaren. So Esteban Gutierrez, unfortunately for him, is down in last position. Potentially some issues there. But it is now a Renault 1-2 with Simon Vigang on pole position with a 119.287. The F1 Esports driver is very much at the front of the field. I'm actually, yeah, it's closer than I thought it would be. I thought there would be a few that would potentially not be able to, to, to put in anything like a 123 or faster. But it's awesome to see the likes of Lando Norris, Esteban Gutierrez, even though he has unfortunately been disqualified. Thibaut Courtois, Stoffel van Dorn. This is an absolute lineup and a half as we watch the McLaren come into the pits. Time 97, 119.553. Fantastic work. What's the comments section saying as we've got five minutes and 45 seconds remaining? Have we got... Any questions? Lando Norris, 20.3. That's from MNT Frederick. I think that's more of a surprised <laughs> question marks than it is uh, happy. I think Lando would be quite happy with that. I saw him in practice doing 120 flats. He's ahead of both Tim at Marduk and Arav, 9th and 10th, the YouTube F1 content creators. I guess they'd be quite happy with that. They will be. Sorry, just... I'm back. <laughs> oh, you're back. Oh, I'm thank back. you. It's not I'm just fixed. a solo commentary. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm back. I can help you out now. So, uh, Matt's doing a great job. We had a few technical issues with the uh, with the mic and the stream. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to see it. But you've got it up and running, and uh, I'm back now. So, Simon Vigan currently leading the way in the qualifying session, as you said, with Formula Danny, um, which is Daniel Bresney, of course. Only one tenth behind, less than a tenth. So very close between those two. Who's the surprise? Will and E, like you said, not last. Esteban Gutierrez disqualified. Disappointing for him, won't that be? Won't that be? Won't that? Isn't that, Matt? <laughs> Isn't that? Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back. I'm not sure exactly why he's been disqualified, whether he's been kicked out by the game or if he's... I mean, I saw a lot of people in practice going backwards after setting their lap time. I'm hoping that's not what he was doing because that's another reason for getting <laughs> disqualified. Uh, but yeah, Will and E, he's half a second off uh, Super GT, who I'm very... Dis I mean... For reference, I did a 21.8 and my pad was dusty. Okay, so that would have popped me in 15th place. Anyone that's slower than that, disgusted. Especially Super GT and Jimmy Broadbent. So I'm sure those guys have just uh, not set a lap time uh, that's been particularly representative of their pace. Yes, um, those guys not doing too well at the moment. Thibaut Courtois as well. Uh, we were hoping that he'd be doing uh, a lot better, but not, um, not quite up and running. Maybe he's just putting that banker lap. He's going to be setting a quick lap later on. Who knows? We're just going to have to wait and see, aren't we? Um, 
Who else can we look at? Who else? We're currently watching Arif. He's on his flying lap at the moment. Not too bad. He's kept it nice and clean as we're watching. We've got the mini map available as well uh, for ourselves. So we can sort of see where everybody else is uh, out on track. We've got three minutes left of this qualifying session. So I suppose most of the people are going to be either in the pits or just starting uh, their laps now, won't they, Matt? Yes, they will. Three minutes and 26 seconds remaining. Uh, Arav looks like he is on a fast lap. Mr. Arav himself, 300,000 YouTube subscribers. A lot of pressure on his shoulders to, to make sure he maybe improves on his 121.0. I don't think he'll be too happy with that, considering he's probably done around 15,000 laps in his <laughs> lifetime around this track. <laughs> but uh, will he improve? Sorry. I'm not sure. Surprise of the session so far has to be Tom97 up in fourth position, doing a stellar job at the moment, quicker okay. than Veloce Hypers as well. Tomek, of course, uh, in P5, and James Baldwin, who is literally the world's fastest gamer. So Tom will be very happy with that lap time indeed. Yeah, part of the uh, Veloce crew, crew is Tom, and uh, may maybe he had a, a heads up on when this uh, this race was happening, but it looks like he's done a done a bit of practice anyway. 119.5, very quick indeed. Just to remind all the viewers, obviously all assists are allowed, which is to make sure that it's accessible for, for everybody that's joining, uh, which, which is nice, which is good to see. We, we don't want an elite session where half the field are spinning, do we? That's, that's That wouldn't be fun. No, not at all, especially with some of the new guys coming in. Um, we don't want that at all because uh, it's a big step up in this game especially when you've got trash control off it's very it takes quite a lot of time to uh, sort of get used to it so um uh for uh, knowledge inside knowledge esteban gutierrez his game crashed and that's why he was disqualified so um he'll be back so yeah he will be back later on i want to also apologize for for the delays and the technical issues that we have had um but we all are we are all up and running now um so hopefully uh, it's an enjoyable show for, for you guys to watch. So coming into the last minute and a half now of qualifying. Now this is where everybody's going to be coming out of the pits and trying to set their best lap time. If they're out, if they're going out of the pits sort of now, which is going to be maybe a little bit too late. So we'll wait and see who is going to be going for that final run. There's a few guys out on track at the moment. Um, as there's a yellow flag in sector one, so maybe that's something going slowly. I think Benjamin Daly as well as he coming out. He's coming around the final corner to set a fast lap time, but it's not going to be a fast lap time. So maybe he's going again for one more lap in this qualifying session. Slightly behind him, it is the other Ferrari of uh, AR12 Gaming. He's coming down in 13th position. It's very close, I suppose, in that uh, in that content creator field. Uh, all on 121s at the moment. You've got the sort of top esports guys on the 119s. Lando and Ben in a field of their own uh, in the 120s. But uh, putting in a good show, definitely, for those two. Absolutely. Anyone that's not on at least an outlap will not get enough time to cross the start-finish line before the timer hits zero. So that'll be people like Louis Delatraz, Arav, who are both in the pits. Some people are already on their lap times. One of them is Tiamat Marduk. Two tenths up on, I imagine that will be his personal best rather than his actual, <laughs> the, rather than the 19.2 that Simon Vigang has has set. So, Team at Marduk, decent, decent first sector, maybe getting towards the skirts of Lando Norris's time of a 120.1. So, very interesting to see how he ends up at the end of this lap. But yeah, if you're not on a lap now, this is it. This is where the grid is settled with uh, only a few seconds remaining. Will no, the notorious no. corner cutter of Team at Marduk, it's, it's his home, home Grand Prix. Can he improve? Round the final corner now for Timo Mardu for his flying lap time. Is it going to be an improvement on the 120.5 that he sets? He comes across the line and it's a 120.4. It is an improvement, but it is not enough to move him higher up the field. Who else have we got out on track? Stoffel van Dorn currently on a lap at the moment. Is it a fast one? We're going to have to wait and see as we've got a alpha coming across the line. That is uh, not going to be a quicker time. I don't know whether that was Formula Danny or uh, James Baldwin. Uh, Baldwin actually stays in position. Tom97 still holding P4 at the moment. Stoffel van Dorn coming through the final couple of corners. Lando Norris has been disqualified from the session for blocking the pit lane. So Lando's been a little bit naughty there. As Stoffel van Dorn comes around the final corner now to uh, end his flying lap. Is it going to be an improvement on the 121.2? Yes, it is. It's a 120.5. It moves him up into ninth position ahead of Araba. Great lap there from Stoffel van Dorn. We've also got Veloce Ryan on a flying lap, but it's not gonna be a flying lap as he's gone off the track there, so not good for Veloce Ryan, which of, which is of course Ryan Tavita off the track again. He's really trying to find the limits of this Australian Grand Prix, and unfortunately, uh, that's gonna be qualifying session over for him. Have we got anybody else still out on track? James Baldwin 
Uh, maybe, it doesn't look like it. It might but should be on a quicker time. No, he's not. He's slowing down. He's letting his teammate through. So I think that's going to be qualifying it. Unless uh, Formula Danny has something up his sleeve. We all know Daniel Bresne is quick, don't we? So he could always pull something out of the bag on the final lap. Here comes Danny into the last couple of corners. There's not long uh, left on this world. Actually, the session is over, and that's why the time remaining is just a countdown for that. He's come through the final two corners now is Daniel Bresne. Is it going to be an improvement? On the 119.342 that he set. Can he take pole position away from Simon Faragani? Comes across the line. And Danny Beresne is in pole position for the Not Oz Grand Prix. Well done there to Daniel Beresne. Nicking it from Simon Vigang uh, at the line. And how exciting was that, Matthew Gallagher? Wow, what a lap right at the end. It's, uh, you know, he's, he's very much used to having that pressure of Danny Bresne and he takes pole position. You, you have to say the last few seasons of F1 Esports, he hasn't really uh, delivered on the level that he would have hoped. Uh, you know, he's got the talent, he's got the pace and whether it's, you know, rig issues or he's he's been involved in an incident in a race, he has that pure speed and a 119.0, that is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe that man is nearly three seconds quicker than me. That's frightening. Mental lap there <laughs> from Danny. Simon Vigang in second with Viano Watmo third. Then it's Hypers in fourth with Tom97. Great performance from him in fifth and Limitless in sixth. Baldwin uh, was in seventh with uh, Timo Marduk. He crossed the line, I believe, in eighth. And uh, then I think it was Stoffel van Dorn who was ninth, just ahead of Araba. So good lap times from uh, some of the guys that we were surprised at. Stoffel van Dorn obviously just jumping onto the game um, yesterday, really, and says he had a pretty good lap time uh, to get himself up into P9 ahead of Araba, splitting the two F1 2019 content creators, which is going to be exciting to see. So now moving into the race, how would you adapt yourself from, uh, you know, preparing for a qualifying session to then compare, uh, preparing for a race? How does that differ? Well, I guess... You know, the adrenaline's pumping from trying to set the fastest lap time you possibly can. You're on the edge. You know, you can make a mistake. Whereas when you're going into a race of a 50% distance, you need to just rein it back in a little bit. You know, kind of bring in that race craft that, that you've, you've developed over the course of however many years you've played the game. Or maybe you've just picked it up today. Who knows? But it's just reining that back in. Put in that two, three tenths just in the pocket for when you really need to push. Just keep that consistency, especially in the first few laps. You know, make a move if it's on, but definitely don't try go five wide into turn one, especially around <laughs> Australia, because it's not a, a heavy braking zone. It's you know, that medium speed corner. So it's just just don't ruin your race in lap one. I think that's probably my top tip. Consistency is going to be key at the end of the day, isn't it? As we're now underway with the formation lap. This will be interesting to see how they're going to take the formation lap. Are they going to drive, you know, slowly warm up the tyres? Uh, or are they just going to bomb it and try and overtake each other? That's what was going to be interesting to see. This is a warm up to the race, I suppose. As uh, we're currently watching uh, Formula Danny, Daniel Beresne, currently leading the pack at the moment. Simon Vigang, of course, is in second. We'll run you through the whole grid now because we didn't get to see it earlier. So, uh, Jana Watmeyer is in third with Hypers Tomek in P4. Tom97, the first of the content creators, starts in P5 with TRL Limitless just behind him in sixth, of course, uh, ex-league racer and also ex-F1 uh, esports driver. So good showing there for Limitless. James Baldwin, world's fastest gamer, lines up in seventh just behind Limitless. Uh, and then you've got Tim and Marduk, the first of the bigger content creators uh, lining up in P8. Stoffel van Dorn, first of the real-life drivers. He qualified in P9. Great showing there for the Mercedes uh, EQ driver. Arava TV qualifies in P10, so just scraping into the top 10. Can he hold on to it? We're just going to have to wait and see, aren't we? Louis Delatraz uh, in P11 with AR12 Gaming in P12. Jimmy Broadbent, not a good showing, but of course, F1 2019 is not his game, but it'll be interesting to see how he can make himself up through the field starting in P13. Then we've got Thibaut Courtois, of course, the Real Madrid goalkeeper, qualifying in P14 in the racing point. Sasha is in P15 with Ryan DeVita in 16th. Then we have Will and E. Uh, a lot of you guys cheering on for Will and E. He is down in P17. It'll be interesting to see what he can do for this race. Will he keep it clean or will there be an incident at the start for him? Only time will tell. Super GT qualified down in P18. Not a good qualifying session for him. And he would certainly be looking to work his way up through the field. As Lando Norris is down in P19, starting from the back. Doing a last to question mark chance as Ben flies out of nowhere. Completely not in the correct uh, grid slot there. Esteban Gutierrez had technical issues, unfortunately, in the qualifying session and he will start in p20 as it looks like we are going to get underway for the not the oz gp are you guys ready for this exciting race we've got f1 drivers xf1 drivers real life racers 
content creators and the lights are coming on now we go to four five red lights and it is lights out and we are stuck on the grid i don't really know what's going on there and away <laughs> we go okay that was a really weird glitch it lights went out and everybody just stopped going but we're underway as it looks like it's free wide down towards turn one we've got the uh, Alfa Romeo of Daniel Perez, they just about getting past the two Renaults. And Simon Vigan has been caught up in an instant there as he's dropped way down to the field. So is Arif as he's down in towards 20. Not good start for uh, Simon Vigan, but Jan Watman gaining a position. Oh, there's a Williams round as well. Who is that? That is Tom97 after having such a good qualifying session is now down into P8. I hope for him that he has not got damage because that's really going to hurt his race. Stoffel van Dorn, though, has had an absolute fly and so is Louis Delatraz. Louis Delatraz is now up into sixth place as Van Dorn slots in. To, uh, sorry, Louis Delatraz in sixth. Stop Van Dorn slots into fifth. Tiro Limitless has dropped down. Team at Marduk has sort of stayed in position. Esteban Gutierrez with a great start from the back of the grid, moving up into P14. Now battling with Thibaut Courtois as uh, Lando Norris is down in 16th still, but making his way up through the grid. But that was a sensational start from um, the two Renaults getting side by side with the Williams driver. Stoffel Van Dorn goes round. There's contract between him and Louis Delatraz. Van Dorn is round. I think he's still in the race as there's a Toro Rosso spinning as well. There is an almighty amount of carnage going on in the opening couple of laps of this race. It's just, just the first lap. It's not even on lap two at the moment. And everybody oh, is going round. What is going on, Matthew Gallagher? Well, unfortunately, I'm a little bit delayed, so I apologise to any viewers where if, if I'm not responding, if something happens, I'm actually watching the YouTube because something went down. But yeah, the Delatraz uh, move on uh, Stoffel van Dorn was audacious, to say the least. What a crazy move to go try and go through that fast left right hander. And it's completely ruined uh, van Dorn's race after an amazing start. Well, unlike real life, of course, you don't have to worry about uh, actually hurting yourself in these. You can go for those moves and you just know that your car may get damaged in it and you may be out of the race but at least you're not going to hurt yourself so i suppose you do have a little bit more bravery if you are a real life racer delatraz has now been overtaken by tyrell limitless and moves down into p6 i'm not too sure whether delatraz got a penalty or any sort of damage from that it'd be interesting to see as the race goes on as formula danny still holds the lead but he is only six tenths ahead of yano Watman. of course drs is not available at the moment that will come on the next lap and then maybe yano can go for a fight with danny berezne uh hypers as well Definitely staying in the mix. We've got the yellow flag out in sector two at the moment, but it doesn't really look like anybody's stopped on track, so I'm not really too sure what that is for at the moment. But it's interesting to see, actually, if you look on the left-hand side of your screens, the tyre strategies, everybody's starting on the softs, apart from Lando Norris. It looks like there's a Ferrari in the wall, and that's AR12 Gaming. Very lucky for him not to be out of the race. It looks like it's just out of the fast left-right chicane, so maybe he's dropped it on the curbs. The curbs are very tricky there, aren't they, Matt? Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, I've just seen the Ferrari in the wall. That's, uh, it, that, that fast left right is so difficult to, to manage just purely because you think you can take it flat, but then if you just get on the curb a little bit too much, or especially on the outside curb, the car just unsettles and you think, oh, I'm in an F1 car, it'll, it'll stick, but it doesn't. And then you fly into the wall and you look like an amateur, which is unfortunately what's happened there. But, you know, these are, they're, they're very much on the limit uh, at the moment, which uh, maybe they just need to rein it in, like I said at the beginning of the race. Maybe they do, but I feel like these guys at the front aren't going to be doing that. You've got Danny uh, with Yano Watmir breathing down his neck at the moment. And you've also got Hypers very close, just sort of watching this battle in the Red Bull, sort of waiting to see what's going to go on between Yano Watmir and uh, Formula Danny and see whether he can pick up any of the pieces there. James Baldwin a further two seconds behind at the moment after <laughs> two laps of this race. We have a nice little shot there. Through the fast left right chicane of course alt getting that all wrong those curves around that corner just like to you know chew you up and spit you back out again as uh, as i was talking before that crash though lando norris starting on the medium tires so going for that different strategy call compared to everyone else it looks like we've got a hat in the barrier as well so i think that is louis delatraz who's gone down or maybe it's uh it's um ryan to vito who's actually had a great start moving up into p8 lando norris actually up into p9 so um, the different tyre strategy could be going well for him. What do you think, Matt? On the starting on the mediums, definitely a good call. Well, he's the only one on the alternate strategy, so fair play to him going for it. And I'm surprised there hasn't been a few others that have tried it on the mediums as well. But it, it, clearly, you know, he's going to be going longer into this race. He'll be going maybe, well, I imagine 17, 18 laps. <laughs> he actually said to me before the race to to join his Twitch 
uh, not his Twitch stream, sorry, his, uh, his Discord server and uh, be his pit engineer. So uh, <laughs> uh, to tell him when to box and to be Jav. But unfortunately, I, I can't do that as I'm commentating. But yeah, Lando definitely going to go longer into this race. He's just hoping that people that are all on the same strategy, that they keep you know, crashing into each other, just holding each other up. Uh, whereas Lando, yeah, he just wants to be in a race of his own, just chill out front. He'll be leading the race at some point, unless he loses too much time to, to Danny that he has a freeze pit stop. But yeah, interesting to see it from Lando. That F1 mind, you know, he's got it switched on at all times, even when it's not a Formula One weekend. Well, if you uh, disappear from the uh, from the commentary at any sort of time, we know where you're going to. You're going to tell Lando to come into the box. It's interesting to see as well, <laughs> Will and E doing a pretty good job, actually. He's in P11 at the moment. He's holding his own. Okay, he's dropped, just dropped down into P12 as uh, Louis Delatraz has overtaken him. Brave again from the left-right chicane. Louis Delatraz just doesn't have any fear going for the overtake into that corner. And actually, Will and E coming back at him there. And he's actually maybe overtaken him as uh, Lando Norris has just overtaken uh, Ryan Tavita. But Will and E overtake uh louis delatraz there uh sorry no sorry my bad i'm watching lando norris i'm watching the wrong person we're actually watching um lando norris says i think will and he had, might have had a problem because he was running up into a good position and now he's dropped down so maybe he's had an incident with louis delatraz as ryan tavita goes up the inside down towards to one but lando gives him space he knows that this is a long game ryan not good on the exit there's contact between the two of them ryan goes round and uh, Lando Norris gets away with it. A little bit of contact between the two of them. I think just two just didn't go into one on the exit of turn one and into turn two. And unfortunately for Ryan Tavita, that has sent him round. And Lando Norris now moves up into eighth place. But he's got Simon Vigang uh, closing in on him at the moment. So how will he handle one and F1 esports driver? Oh, this is a huge shunt there. Arab has gone round. That's Louis Delatraz, Simon Vigang. Everybody getting caught up oh in the fast goodness. left hand, right hander. What on earth has gone on there? Wow, that uh, is incredible stuff. What has gone on? Arab has been involved. You've had Louis Delatraz, Simon Vigang. I don't know who else. Sasha as well. And the Williams has definitely been caught up as he's round again. Arab is round again. Arab is not putting on a good show for himself. Uh, showing his skills against some of the best in the very w in, in the world. And also real race drivers, unfortunately, for Arab. Both Ferraris now down the back of the field. It's going to be a miracle for those two to uh, get back into it. There's a yellow flag out again. Not too sure if there's any problems. I don't think so, but very unfortunate for Arab. Unfortunately, we don't have replays uh, to show you, but it'd be interesting to see later on actually what went on between those guys. But uh, people who gained from it, though, Super GT up into P9. As we've got a Mercedes of Esteban Gutierrez going side by side with Simon Vigang. So Vigang trying to get himself back into the race here. Esteban Gutierrez, unfortunately, he's just going to have to yield that as Vigang is now into the pits. The first of the drivers to come into the pits. I'm guessing that's for a new front wing as he gets... Uh, as AR12 Gaming gets a penalty, Simon Vigang also gets a penalty for speeding into the pit lane. So that's going to be very, very frustrating there for Vigang. As we're now watching Super GT go on the attack of Thibaut Courtois. Maybe Thibaut Courtois just got past him. Uh, Super GT not able to go for a move there down in towards uh, turn three. And Thibaut Courtois, the Real Madrid driver, Real Madrid uh, goalkeeper, has now moved up into the points. He's up into P9. Real Madrid driver, have we got a new Formula 1 team? Driver, we have. <laughs> Real Madrid Esports coming at you. <laughs> Yeah, but just going back to the, the incident that occurred and then everyone's spinning and then spinning again. The, the problem with, with this is that, you know, if, you, if you're in an incident and you, you've spun up the rears and you've got so much heat in them that they are, they, they're red, you know, they'll come up on the, the HUD, as it's known, uh, and it'll tell you that there's far too much heat in the tyres. You just lose all grips. Arav just took too much speed into the next corner, spun round again. And it's just it's just a complete passenger at that, at that stage. So... Uh, unfortunate to see so many crashes, but as I mentioned before this race started, there is quite a skill gap between the top and the bottom. But, you know, if you just stay out of danger, like Super GT has, he's up in 10th, he's in the points. And that's what you got to do in in this kind of environment, which is, which is different. You know, these aren't, aren't all, you know, expert sim racers that are on it all the time. But that's what that's what's so special about it, is that we've got such an array of content creators Formula One drivers, celebrities, you know, there's loads of people in there. And it's great to see that they're all going wheel to wheel and not scared, especially Louis Delatraz. My days, that man is a man possessed. <laughs> he has the biggest kahunas of anyone in this lobby at the moment. He will go for any sort of move and he does not care uh, whether he comes out worse at the end of it or whether someone else does. Someone else to mention who has also gained really quite a lot uh, from just keeping it clean and keeping out of trouble. Lando Norris, of course, started at the back of the grid with the disqualification for... Um, having a bit of trouble in the pit lane. 
as we're now watching Yana Watme went a little bit wide there through the left right chicane they're coming up to I believe that is Arif or maybe it's ART uh, AR12 gaming who is getting lapped there I believe it is him he's getting way out of the way and actually going off the track I'm not too sure whether he's having issues whether he's got front wing damage again or a problem for him. We're currently on board with TMM Magic, who's going on the attack of TRL Limitless. This is going to get tasty. Two people that you know very well. Uh, who do you fancy in this battle? Oh, you're putting me on the spot there. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. It's, it's difficult to say that they're, they're, they're very closely matched uh, in pace. So you just got to make sure that Okay, one of them don't into the pits anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're into the pits anyway. Limitless comes into the pits. He maybe sees that uh, Ben is a little bit quicker than him at that stage. Maybe Limitless had damage, uh, and that's why he needs to come into the pits. Ben I think he definitely had damage if Ben's quicker than him. <laughs> oh, I love that. Throwing the shade at Ben. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. And what we love to see here is Thibaut Cortar moves up into 8th after the Limitless Whereabouts he's going to come out. He's going on to the harder tyres. So as Hypers has come into the pits as well. So he was uh, in the podium position in P3. He's going on to the hards as well, going for the undercut. Uh, I'm not too sure whether this yellow flag that keeps popping up is actually for a reason. I think that's just people coming into the pit lane. As it looks like a Mercedes, that's Stoffel Van Dorn, who also comes into the pit lane. And uh, I feel like a lot of drivers are going to be coming in for the hard tyres at the moment. But will we see anybody... Um, sort of try and stick it out for the mediums and go a little bit late. Of course, Lando Norris will be going for that stretch, I suppose. Holding out on the mediums, then coming out uh, on the softs later on in the race. Um, but a lot of split strategies, I suppose. And it's good to see. It's good to see the split strategies and a lot of exciting. So we just don't know who's going to come out on top, do we? I mean, when you say uh, it's probably not the most split strategy race, because I think these guys will be coming into the pits in the next lap or two. In terms of the, the differences in, in laps, it will you know, it'll show towards the end of the race the guys that have maybe Simon Vigang who pitted two laps ago. Uh, when, he, when we get to lap 29, he's still on those same set, set of tyres. He will be struggling a lot. Uh, but I think a lot of these guys will be coming in for the hards. But yeah, as you say, there might be a few that, that try and push it for the mediums. I think that's maybe what Lando's trying to do. But the problem is if, if he goes too far on the mediums, but not far enough that he can make the softs work at the end, he is absolutely screwed. You know, he'll be just kind of skating around. His tyres will be completely gone. Uh, and then he will have kind of missed that window where going onto the hards earlier would have been quicker so i don't think lando's done enough practice to know which one's better so he's kind of just uh, throwing the dice a little bit uh, but yeah it, it'll be exciting to see as he's up into p3 at the moment i don't think for long though it would be interesting to see whether lando can make that last uh, a couple of drivers coming into the pits while you were talking there so we had uh yana watmir and hypers obviously came into the pits the lap before so yana watmir had to sort of defend against that and it was very close between the two of them um, Hypers actually was about one temp separating the two drivers as they came out. Uh, Baldwin also coming into the pits as well as Tom97. Uh, Limitless really losing out, so definitely had front wing damage as he's way down in 11th as uh, Tom, who was ahead of him uh, before the pit stop phase, um, is still in P7. So that'd be interesting to see. Tim and Marduk holding out at the moment, so he's maybe odds we see a big corner cut there from um, Hypers. That's definitely got to be a warning. Uh, really taking track limits to a new level. Uh, is that something you know maybe he's learned from you matt did you ever use corner cut back in your day oh absolutely yeah no especially if people weren't watching I mean, i'd be i'd be all over that you know <laughs> you've got to got to push the rules to the absolute limits just like the drivers do and uh, if they're not if you're not going to get penalized for it then then go for it but if you are going to get penalized for it then obviously you know i'd rein it back in a little bit but you know these guys are trying to make as many uh, gains as possible i mean lando before the <laughs> before the uh, the race started he was speaking to me uh, well speaking to us in, in in the chat going so how many warnings can i get before i get a penalty <laughs> and how many warnings can i do on my qualifying lap so yeah he, he's trying to get the, the smallest of margins of gains that he possibly can well, he's getting more than smallest margins of gains. He's actually going wheel to wheel with Team at Marduk on the different tyre strategy at the moment. Jimmy Broadbent getting a five second penalty for speeding into the pit lane as Ben is now defending from Lando. He goes up the inside and Norris has got the job done on Team at Marduk. Uh, Formula Danny come, came into the pits there. Uh, so he came out just ahead of this battle and that's going to really affect Jano Watmir because he's going to get held up by not only Team at Marduk but also Lando Norris who is going longer into this race as well as Hypers. Uh, but I suppose maybe his teammate will let him through, but I'm not sure. I feel like this is just a free-for-all. Team orders do not come into play here today as Jano Watmir goes up the inside in towards the left-right chicane. Very brave move there from Jano Watmir. And maybe Ben is going to let through Hypers. Here he goes, Hypers up the inside, down towards the right hand. And Ben still not letting him through, trying to hold on. But unfortunately for TMM Marduk, he has to 
let hypers back through as we're getting a bit of latency issues there. Ben's not, Ben, you're not in Australia. Why are you having latency issues? Seems to just always be a problem for Tiamat Mardu. But now Yano Watme, he needs to get past Lando Norris as quickly as he can if he wants any hope of trying to catch up to Formula Danny. Uh, Lando Norris doesn't really look like he's defending too much to go down on, in towards turn one. And yes, Norris knows that he cannot win that battle. He needs to take these tyres as long as he possibly can. And there is no point trying to fight with Yano Watme at the moment. But he is going to tuck into that slipstream and maybe just pull himself along and get a little bit quicker, especially around the guys that he is fighting with. Louis Delatraz gets a free second time penalty for multiple warnings. So just really just pushing this game as much as he possibly can. Unfortunately, pushing it a little bit too far there as it looks like Hypers is now right on the tail of Lando Norris. Can he get the job done? Here we go, Hypers in towards the right, the long right, and then in towards the chicane. He is going to get the inside line as we've got a terrible camera angle, but Hypers shooting up the inside there, getting the job done. A fantastic move from Veloce Hypers, and he moves up past Lando Norris. But Norris going to have a look again. Here he goes in towards the left-right chicane. Is he going to go for it? Is he going to fight with Hypers round the outside? He definitely has a little look, and he's just tucking up right into the slipstream of Hypers now. Into the DRS they go, and Lando Norris gets back past. He's back past Hypers on a different tyre strategy. So, of course, those mediums have gone a long way. Yes, Hypers is on the hardest uh, compound, so his tyres haven't got as much grip, but I suppose there's probably even Stevens maybe between the two of them, because Lando has been on those tyres for 10 laps now. So they are starting to come near the end of their life cycle, but he's definitely going to try and push them as much as he possibly can. Of course, we've got uh, 16, uh, 17 laps left to go in this race. Hypers now going side by side with Lando once again and making it look very easy on the start finish straight, moving up in towards P4 as James Baldwin now looks to rein in this group and go for the overtake. What a battle that was, Matthew Gallagher. Yeah, that took far too long for Tomic to really get past there. I, I think that these guys are definitely just milking the fact that they're racing Lando Norris, if I'm being <laughs> completely honest. You've heard it here first. I guarantee that Tiamat Marduk stayed out that <laughs> extra lap so that he could go side by side and make a YouTube video that says, I raced wheel to wheel with Lando <laughs> Norris. You you wait. That is going to be a video. But either way, great to see the, the side by side action and no one faced the other way or in the wall. So... Lando, I don't think, really wanted to fight it anyway. It was just that Tomek kept messing up his exit, or maybe he's just enjoying it, as I say. But Lando's very much in tyre conservation mode at the moment and kind of just wants everyone to, to go past him, and then he can do his pits and then come out with, with fresher tyres. Yes, indeed. As we're watching uh, James Baldwin now get the job done on uh, Lando Norris. Will he have the same issue that Hyper's had, that Tomek had, uh, of getting past him doesn't look like it unfortunately it looks like Lando Norris maybe a little bit too far back but closing him in in the DRS zone but not able to get the job done little lock up there from James Baldwin but it doesn't look like it's going to affect him it's interesting to see actually that James Baldwin went for the medium tyres so is he going to be going for that two stop strategy or does he believe that he can take these mediums all the way to the end because everyone else seems to be going to the end of the race um, but James Baldwin is the only one Lando Norris now comes into the pit uh, for the first time in this race as uh, he will be going to be interested to see what tyres Lando goes for. Will he be going for the hards all the way to the end of the yeah, race, or will be. he be going on to the mediums? He is onto the hards. Okay, you correct there, Matt. You know, you know your <laughs> stuff. This is why we bring you in as the technical analysis. You know your yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, Lando if he'd gone on another set of mediums, uh, he would have been screwed because you know two stops. I don't think is the quickest way, especially when uh, the the field is maybe not so uh, consistent. He, you, know, you just need to have that one stop. Get out there, set out some kiss consistent lap times, and Lando comes out in eight, so not too bad for him. Esteban Gutierrez from the back of the field in ninth, so th there are quite a few standout performances here. And Willany is not last. Willany is not last, and that is what matters. He's ahead of Arava, but I'm not too sure how long for. Whether those two are having their own little battle at the back of the field at the moment, as we've got uh, Sasha going off the track as well. So this is a little tasty battle, isn't it? Of course, Sasha Willany and Arava TV all going wheel to wheel at this Australian Grand Prix, or not the Oz Grand Prix, as uh, we like to call it. But uh, here we go. Willany, can I get the job done? If Willany can make an overtake, then everybody is going to go wild. This is what we want to see. Willany on a uh, 2019 Japanese F3 champion. Go on, Will. Go for the overtake. Just go for it. Up the inside. He's gone for it. Up the inside. Very late on the brakes as well. Unfortunately, just a little <laughs> bit too late. <laughs> And that is him out of that battle for now. It's going to be the turn of Arava to see whether he can get past the 2019 Japanese F3 champion. Unfortunately, uh, to be fair, I give it to Will. He went for it. He went for the move. There was no real need to go for it on that lap. Maybe he could have tried it in a couple of laps time. But I, you know, I salute that. That is a great attempt from Will. And he unfortunately just could not pull it off. But brilliant there from no, Will. I, I... 
I don't know so, if uh, he's actually watching the stream or not. I reckon he actually is because uh, <laughs> I, I mentioned it beforehand. I, he's like, oh, be kind to me in the broadcast. I said, of course, you know. And I said, if you go for a move, even if you're a lap, lap down, I will absolutely celebrate it. I did say he had to make it stick, though. And <laughs> I, I, uh, he stuck it in the gravel, but that, <laughs> but not not quite the uh, the move there, unfortunately, for Will. But still ahead of AR12 Gaming. Still ahead of AL12 Gaming. It would be interesting to see whether those two have a battle later on away. Or maybe even Will can uh, claw Arav back in. That would be very embarrassing for Arav. He could go from uh, a, a thumbnail and a title of racing with Lando Norris to racing and getting beaten by Will and he. Just need to post the, uh, the Nico Rosberg clip with the exposure behind and say, is Arav's career over? Um, <laughs> I mean, YouTube might be happy to delete his channel once again. <laughs> Um, but let's look at what else is going on throughout the fields. We've got Simon Vigan currently going uh, with a little bit of a battle with Esteban Gutierrez. So Gutierrez is holding on very, very nicely, of course. As you mentioned earlier, started from the back of the grid. Simon Vigan started from the front of the front row of the grid in P2. Unfortunately, had that uh, collision on the very first lap with uh, Formula Danny and his teammate going three wide down and towards turn one. Really cost him. Uh, in the race as he is now trying to work his way back through the field. He's had so many incidents. He just hasn't been able to have a clean race, but he is trying to claw back Esteban Gutierrez. But Gutierrez doing a stellar job at the moment, holding on to his position. It is interesting to see, though, that they are on different tyre strategies. Uh, Simon Weigang on the hards, eight laps old, whereas Esteban Gutierrez is on fresher and also softer tyres. So he definitely has that advantage as Arrow gets a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. So, you know, Arrow up to his old tricks, cutting lots of corners. It's uh, not... Not new to see, of course, as Simon Vigang so close to the back of Esteban Gutierrez there. And this looks like, unfortunately, this is the only battle going on on track at the moment. But it'd be interesting to see what Lando Norris can do. Oh, there's contact there between Simon Vigang and Esteban Gutierrez. Not really too sure what Vigang is doing. And maybe he's just waiting for Gutierrez. Yes, good sport there. Good sportsman from uh, Simon Vigang. Unfortunately, a little bit of an issue for him. Maybe just got a little bit too hot there going into the back of Esteban Gutierrez. Um... But very nice to see that he waited up for him and allowed Esteban to have that position. But that has allowed Thibaut Courtois to catch up to these guys. So he's running in P11. He'll be looking to get into the points in stage race. And also Super GT is right behind this battle. So I was saying this was the only battle out on track. But uh, now it's a four-way battle for the for ninth and tenth position. So the last two remaining points positions of this race. It's also interesting to see. You've got James Baldwin catching up to Hypers. Of course, they are on different strategies. And I feel like James is going to have to go for that second pit stop. But Simon Vigang on Espan Gutierrez. Here he goes around the outside, down in towards this corner of the DRS straight. And it looks like he's going to get the job done. Yes, he is, of course, an F1 esports driver up against a real life race. Unfortunately, the F1 esports driver is always going to have the edge there with all the practice and all the hours that he has put into the game. And can Esteban Gutierrez hold off against the Real Madrid keeper? What do you think, Matt? Can Thibaut Courtois get into the points today? Yeah, he has the pace. We, we've seen this uh, coming up to this, uh, not the Oz GP, and he's been really quick. Maybe not been as quick as we were hoping, but, you know, he's right on the, the outskirts of, of the top 10. And, you know, <laughs> Simon Vigang's done us a serious favour by uh, punting Esteban Gutierrez <laughs> off. So we've now got a, a four-way battle, although Super GT's fallen away a little bit. Uh, I was just looking at the, the the battle for the lead as well, and there isn't really one. You know, Danny Beresnay is very much checked out at the front, six yeah. seconds ahead of Jano Watmir. He got, he got very lucky when uh, with uh, Team at Marduk and Lando Norris holding up Jano Watmir and Hypers, but we've got a nice battle here as James Baldwin goes up against um, Hypers. He's four tenths, two tenths is the gap at the moment as they're going down in towards turn one. James just holding off at the moment. He's being smart, he's being clever. He knows that he will get DRS once again down this straight, and he is going to make his move most likely down in towards turn three. Of course, he is on the softer compound of tyres. Does he go for it? No. Again, waiting for another lap. James Baldwin, not brave enough. He doesn't feel like he has the potential to get the job done if he goes for it. You know, he's maybe seen what Will and E's been doing out on track and doesn't want to replicate that. Uh, but James Baldwin still following behind Hypers at the moment, but he needs to get the job done as soon as possible if he is coming in for another pit stop, which I believe he should be because there is no way that he will be able to take those mediums to the end. Yeah, 20 laps on the mediums is pretty much impossible. So, he, yeah, as you say, he has to make the move as soon as possible so that he can stretch the gap and then come back at him again with the softs at the end. So, it's, yeah, he's going to be pretty disappointed with himself that he can't get past Pomek. Uh, well, he's not going <laughs> to... be oh, fair, the amount of moves we've seen into the uh, the front left... Oh, he... He's just got a three-second yeah, three time, time penalty. Anyway. That's got to be annoying. But Hypers also has a three-second time penalty. So they're both even Stevens now in this battle. 
Um, yeah, he's evened it out. <laughs> he's, he's making it a level <laughs> playing field. Exactly. Just like uh, Simon Vigang let Esteban Gutierrez back through, James has been like, do you know what, I'll get myself a penalty and we can have a fair race all the way to the end. To be fair, Jeff, the uh, team radio, uh, will, will actually tell him that the car ahead has a, a penalty. So maybe he did. I don't think he did because these are all racers and they're very competitive <laughs> and they want to win. But <laughs> maybe. It's interesting to see that Tom 97 is still holding on to that fifth position. Of course, he had a great qualifying, uh, moving himself up into fourth, dropping down past um, James Baldwin and Hypers, but uh, still holding on to P5 and ahead of Limitless. Quite a bit ahead of Limitless, Limitless as well. Eight seconds at the moment. It's Baldwin still can't get the job done on Veloce Hypers. Really difficult out there, um, which is quite surprising seeing as he is on the softer tyres, but maybe those uh, medium tyres are coming to the end. I think Lando did 11 laps on those medium tyres, 11 or 12 laps. So uh, maybe it's going to be time for him to come into the pits. He might be feeling that wear at this stage of the race and maybe his battle is actually going to be with the likes of Tom 97 and Tyrrell Limitless. But if he comes into the pits, I mean, he's going to drop way down. He's going to drop down maybe in towards where Tim at Marduk and Lando Norris is. Or maybe that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get that uh, thumbnail and um, title for his live stream as well to say that he <laughs> went up against Lando Norris. Everybody's trying to work out that strategy to go head to head with Lando Norris and I mean you'd definitely do the same wouldn't you oh absolutely yeah for sure do I, I, I don't blame Ben do at all I don't blame Ben at all but you know I, I'm sure the F1 fan within himself wants to race Lando anyways not just for the views but definitely <laughs> a, a, a majority part of it I was just looking at, uh, down the field as well. You know, Thibaut Courtois, we did mention him, but he will actually gain a couple of positions, I think, as Esteban Gutierrez's tyres falls off and he might come into the pits again. You've got Simon Vigang on 12 lap old hards. I don't think he's going to make it to the end either. And if he does, it's a miracle. So uh, definitely going to see Courtois in the points, potentially Super GT as well. Jimmy Broadbent, not too far behind his teammate either. Uh, Stoffel van Dorn, I just saw a minute ago, had a, a three-second time penalty come up. So he's been cutting corners as well, taking notes from the uh, F1 content creators. Uh, still very weird, isn't it, to say Stoffel van Dorn 16th yeah, on the F1 van game Dorn. for, for not the Austrian Stoffel van Dorn racing with Lando Norris and uh, Thibaut Cortar and all these other names, Espan Gutierrez in there, all names that we know from Formula 1 and, and real sports. And it's just like, what on earth has this, this idea that started on Thursday, Friday night has just turned into this spectacle, which is incredible to see. Will and he still not last? And that's what we love to see as well. Arab having his own special battle with uh, Sasha down in 17th. So this is an interesting battle between those two at the moment. It looks like James Baldwin uh, struggling to get past Hypers. But uh, Sasha's ghosting at the moment. So I believe that maybe he's had running into an issue. Oh, no. It's, okay. So they're getting lapped, actually, by Jano Otmir. And the way the game works out now is uh, to stop lap drivers from getting in the way and actually affecting races, which uh, you used to do quite a lot in the past in YouTuber Championship to sort of make them exciting. Uh, you can't do that now, so you're going to have to find new ways to do that if you ever bring that championship back on a game instead of karting, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what the uh, future holds for that. I have no idea. And well, I mean, I think a lot of people would love to see it return because it's uh, definitely a fan favourite. Uh, I suppose you probably get DMs and tweets every single day asking you to bring that back as we're watching James Baldwin uh, just drive through Will and E at the moment. Not even drive around him, just straight through Will and E. Uh, and as he goes on the hunt for Hypers at the moment. Not really any battles going on apart from Sasha and Arab. Those two seem to be trading paces, uh, places at the moment uh, in today's race. Sasha, of course, on the mediums. Arab on 12 lap hard. So uh, whether those two will have to make another pit stop in this race, we'll have to wait and see. Nine laps left to go in this Australian Grand Prix. As Simon Vigang, 19 seconds behind Lando Norris. Lando Norris looking very comfortable for an eighth position at the moment. But... He is only 1.6 seconds behind Tim at Marduk. Tim at Marduk is on nine lap old medium. So the potential is that he's going to have to come into the pits. Um, and you've also got potentially with people with penalties ahead of them. We just don't know how many people have got penalties. I mean, you've seen it, Matt. Lots of people have had penalties throughout this race as Lando makes uh, light work of the track limits there. Yes. Corner cutting is very strict. The uh, it is on strict at the moment. So if you go one, two millimeters off the track at a certain speed, you will get a warning or a penalty pretty quickly. I think it's three warnings and you get a penalty. Uh, some of these guys are taking liberties through that fast left right. I'm not going to lie. So I'm very surprised that uh, that Lando that we just saw go through uh, didn't get a penalty there. But maybe he's been quite a good boy up until this maybe. point. But yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the penalty system is, is very strict. Uh, so, you know, it has to be, especially when we've got F1 esports. You can't have people taking liberties uh, and gaining time in, in, in areas that you shouldn't. So, And we've seen that in the last few years in real-life Formula 1 as well, where 
you know they've cracked down on the on the corner cutting the track extending especially you know at america you've seen all sorts of things for stoppers installed so <laughs> it's good to see the f1 game is aligning themselves with that because it's frustrating as a gamer if you're putting all the hours in and then you find out a guy's cutting one of the corners by three inches and getting getting an extra two tenths exactly exactly it's always frustrating to see uh you know like you say when someone puts in so many hours and for someone just to you know it is cheating at the end of the day as uh james baldwin completely cuts that corner uh through so he's definitely not listening to us on this stream he's just in a world of his own as he's trying still to get past hypers but he dives at the inside lock up there very lucky not to go into the back of hypers as there's a yellow flag in sector three it looks like a mclaren that is going slowly uh lando norris it isn't him so unfortunately i believe that is willany unfortunately uh, having a few issues, but Lando Norris closing in on TM at Marzu. Those mediums are starting to drop off, and now Lando Norris is going to go on the hunt of TM at Marzu. This could be a very interesting battle as we're also watching uh, James Baldwin, but now we're flicking back. Here we go, Lando Norris up against TM at Marzu, and Ben is going to go for it again. He's going to go for a battle with the F1 driver as uh, Lando's just reining him in. Or will Ben come into the pits in the next couple of laps? Is he going to stay out? He stays out for another lap. This is going to be a battle. Of course he stays out. Of course he's <laughs> He needs that thumb, though. He needs that CPM, doesn't he? Um, Absolutely, of course. Yeah, but, but why wouldn't is... you stay out? Exactly. If you've, got, if you've got someone like Lando Norris hunting down, breathing on your neck, you know, you want to prove yourself against one of the very best. And, you know, an F1 driver, of course, is going to be one of the very best. So... Ben is loving this at the moment. We know how much of an F1 fan he is. We know how much he loves uh, anything to do with Formula 1. So he must be... His inner fanboy is just oozing out at the moment. Yeah, it's amazing to see. You know, these are just F1 fans and they're racing against real-life racing drivers and Lando Norris, McLaren Formula 1 driver. So, you know, it, it still doesn't get old for, for me that, you know, I've worked in it for a couple of years now, or three years now and it's still doesn't get old when when you do this sort of stuff and you know ben and arav they're involved with with alfa romeo and they spend time with kimi raikkonen and antonio giovanazzi and these are just you know they're fanboys but not passionate but not passionate you're the passionate they're one. not passionate I, i'm the passionate <laughs> one they're fanboys <laughs> oh landon norris still not able to get the job done on team at marduk at the moment but he is closing in the gap is now six seconds so he's definitely going to be within that drs zone so be interesting to see whether Lando can get the job done on this lap. He is closing him in at a rapid rate. He is going to be within DRS, like I said. But he's just lost out a little bit through the final couple of corners there. Ben getting the edge out of the exit and really weaving on the straight. Just trying to get out of, uh, get Lando out of his slipstream as he tries to hold on to seventh place as much as he can. I feel like Ben at this stage, he is going to be going to the end. Same as James Baldwin. Both of those drivers may be making a mistake going onto the medium tyres. They should have probably both gone onto the hards. Uh, and would have had better grip by the end of this race as uh, Lando really seems to be reining in Ben mainly through the corners. The straights, Ben seems to have his it under control, but through the corners, Lando's definitely getting the better of him. It's a little bit slidey there from Lando through the right hander, but he's definitely closing in on TMM Marduk at the moment. Will he get the job done? Maybe in towards the left right game. We've seen lots of moves surprisingly in towards that corner, and especially the corner afterwards because, of course, of the new DRS zone that uh, was added for the 2019 season. Um, Lando Norris could potentially go for a move down there as he's now following behind TMM Marduk, getting onto the grass. That's probably going to lose you a little bit of time, but he is only four attempts behind TMM Marduk. If he can have a good line through here, he can set him up, himself up very nicely for an overtake in towards this next corner. Here he goes, DRS on TMM Marduk. Can he get the job done? Not yet. He's just going to have to wait for the next uh, straight as he's just going to tuck himself now right into the slipstream, right into the rear end of TMM Marduk. He's just going to have to hope, though, the dirty air does not unsettle the car. Simon Vi again gets a three second time penalty for multiple track warnings. He's trying to close in onto this battle as Lando gets a little bit out of shape there, but he manages to keep it onto the track. He's into the DRS zone now. He's into the slipstream of TMM Marduk. Is he, gonna, is he gonna go up the inside in towards turn one? No, he doesn't. Just like James Baldwin being smart. Wait till turn three. You've got another DRS zone. You've got another straight. Here goes Lando on the left hand side. He's gonna have to go round the outside of TMM Mardu. Can he get the job done? Ben getting his elbows out there, squeezing Lando as much as he possibly can. Lando up the inside, in towards turn four, and it looks like he's got the job done, but a little bit wide on exit. Can Ben go around the outside? You have to be very brave to do that. Unfortunately, Ben does not go for it. There's no point ruining your race, but he's still holding on. Ben is not giving up on this battle at the moment, tucking into that slipstream. 
Trying to go around the outside now of Lando Norris. Oh, tucking into the inside. Lando, very defensive. Great reactions there. I mean, that's not surprise. He is a Formula 1 driver. Of course, he's going to have a great reaction. Ben, you're going to have to go back into the book and find another technique to get past Lando there. As it looks like Lando is going to hold on to his position. But Ben will have DRS down this straight. Can he go for the move? Maybe around the outside, inside. Who knows what Ben's going to do. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to be close enough. And he isn't late enough on the brakes uh, to go for that move. So Lando holds on to 7th position. As we've got a yellow in sector 1. It looks like maybe that was the house driver of Ryan Tavita. As he's dropped down into P16. But what a battle this is at the moment, Matt. Yeah, fantastic to see. Uh, Ben's still all over the back of him as well. So I think he's still got a bit of pace in that car, old Ben. I, I, I know his tricks. But after watching the onboards, it's definitely not on strict corner cutting. Uh, I don't it know is, who, who told me that. <laughs> it, is, it is on regular. I, I didn't know that you said it was on strict. No, it is on regular. Ben gets back past Lando down towards turn one, turn two. So he's really fighting with Lando at the moment. Lando up the inside. Very late on the brakes. Can he get it done? A little bit of contact between the two of them. Ben goes into the side. Lando squeezes him out. Gives him a taste of uh, Ben's own medicine. Unfortunately, Ben's going to have to try again. He's going to have to wind that back up. Five tenths is the gap now between the two of them. So he is not out of it. He is still going to be in that slipstream and in that toe and able to go for the overtake again. There are other battles out on track as it looks like Super GT is catching up to Thibaut Cortar at the moment. So there could potentially be an overtake here for these two guys. We'll have to wait and see whether Team Mardu can catch back up to Lando Norris and uh, be interested to see whether he could, the battle can continue between those two. Up at the front, uh, Formula Danny is leading the way by quite a bit, very comfortably at the moment. As, uh, ben gets a three-second time penalty there. That is going to be very unfortunate for him. Super GT getting all out of shape, and it looks like Thibaut Quartar has unfortunately lost the back of Espan Gutierrez. I'm guessing this maybe been an instant for the Real Madrid goalkeeper, as uh, he's currently in P11, and he was right behind Espan Gutierrez when we last left him, but now he's eight seconds off the pace. And Super GT now starts to hunt him down. Sasha and Arab still having their own little battle down for 17th position. They go side by side through turn four. Arab loving this at the moment. Barging Sasha out wide. And it looks like Arab is going to get that position for the time being. Sasha all out of shape. But managing to hold and catch the car. As Super GT does in fact overtake Thibaut Quartar. Getting up into P11. And now Quartar is going to have to go for it. Maybe the gloves that he's got on at the moment. The goalkeeper gloves. Maybe they're just too sticky. Absolutely. What great racing. It's uh, brilliant to see these guys getting absolutely stuck in. But yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised with the amount of penalties that are being dished out here, considering <laughs> it's on regular corner cutting where you literally can take many liberties. So uh, very naughty from Tia Marduk getting a uh, three second time penalty to probably add to the array that he's already got. But uh, awesome to see these guys. I think they've at this point and stage of the race, especially the more casual ones, they're just getting into the groove. They'll look at the lap counter and go, oh, I've got three laps to go. That's that's rubbish. I'm just about getting stuck in now. And uh, yeah, so, but Arav absolutely elbows out, showing a real-life racing driver exactly what he's made of. And uh, but yeah, a bit of a shame that we didn't get a, a battle for the, at the front with, with Danny Berezne and Jana Watmir because they're both very closely closely matched but you know that's just the nature of of trying to get through some of these back markers unfortunately yeah no battle at the front but we do have a very tasty battle for what is going to be p6 as it looks like i think limitless came into the pits and uh dropped back or whether no he was catching up actually to tim and marduk and lando norris but lando norris up into p6 uh, tim and marduk right behind him four tenths behind and uh limitless now coming into this battle as well so we don't have the battle for the front, but we have some big names going head-to-head -head in the final three laps of this race. Lando Norris, can he hold off TMM Marduk and TRL Limitless? Two people who have a lot of knowledge of this game. They've spent a lot of hours on F1 2019 and also past games as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this battle unfolds. Looking further down the field, we also have uh, Super GT and Courtois still going head-to-head. -head. Uh, that battle isn't over yet. Of course, Limitless is teammate. Uh, Courtois and then you've got Louis Delatraz right behind Jimmy Broadbent Stoffer Van Dorn involved in that battle as well so very close it's coming towards the end of the race and all these battles that are happening out on track but this is the main one that we want to see Tim Mardu trying to go onto the attack of Lando Norris but at the same time also having to defend his position against Tiro Limitless who but they both get a three second time penalty both of them really getting close now to uh, what could be a disqualification because they both had, I think that's nine seconds of time penalties. Especially Ben as Lando Norris gets very out of shape. Not too sure whether that was actually him or maybe that was just a glitch from the game getting his car a little at the back end, just a little bit out there, out of shape. But uh, Lando Norris, no, Ben is right on his tail. Five tenths 
is the gap between these two drivers as uh, Ben is going to get that DRS wide open and try and get as close as he possibly can down in towards turn one and then go for the overtake potentially in towards turn three as Thibaut Quartar finally gets his first penalty of the game. I mean, goalkeepers, they don't usually take penalties. They're usually at the far end of taking penalties. Um, so it's no surprise that on lap 28, uh, Thibaut Quartar finally gets to get a penalty of his own. And Stoffel Van Dorn, everyone's getting penalties at this late stage of the race. I suppose the multiple warnings are starting to rack up as we got go into the final two laps of this race as uh, Landon is still defending from Tim Amadou, who's really getting all out of shape there, Ben. Way out of shape. <laughs> that, yeah, I, I think Ben's tyres are very much off the cliff now. He's 17 laps on those mediums and he's just desperately trying to stay up with Lando Norris. But I think that he will uh, unfortunately uh, succumb to TRI Limitless maybe making a move at some point but he's on 20 lap old hards as well so all of these guys are struggling it's just like ice skating especially through, through this fast left right where they have been taking liberties ben's taking liberties every corner i've seen uh, so far this 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 grand prix and i also wondered how long it would take you to drop some sort of football pun. And it, it took you 28 28 or 29 20, laps so uh, 29 laps to get a team <laughs> joke out uh, we, we haven't watched on board, you know, I want to say, you know, when he catches the rear end, losing the back end, what a save, uh... but unfortunately, you know, it just didn't come, I was waiting for it. Thibaut Courtois, you've led us down as uh, we go on to the final lap now as we're watching Courtois, he's actually on screen, he's going side by side with Super GT, gets the move done, he stays ahead as Super GT goes round, might have been a little bit of contact between the two of them there as it looks like formula danny now coming through the last final couple of corners he got pole position he led from the start there was a little bit of an altercation between the two renault drivers as they went three wide down in towards turn one but he did manage to hold on he's kept it clean and he comes round the final corner to win the not the oz gp daniel berezne is our wait is our race winner here today as it looks like Jano Otmir is going to come across the line in P2 but we don't know with all the penalties that are going on as uh, Thibaut Courtois gets five second time penalty for unserving a penalty so that must mean for speeding into the pit lane Hypers comes across the line in third will he hold on to that or will James Baldwin overtake him as he is quite a bit down the road actually really dropping off at the end as we're still watching this battle unfold between TMM Marduk and Tiro Limitless as uh, they are going down in towards to old Limitless off the track doing an Alexander Albon trying to just get the job done but Ben holding on fantastically at the moment Tom 97 comes home in P5 he's going to be absolutely ecstatic with that race result for him as so we're going to have Lando Norris come home in P6 Benjamin Daly really trying to defend from Tyrrell Limitless as they both come across the line now and it looks like Ben is just about going to hold on to can he no Tyrrell Limitless gets it through penalties Ben finishes in, in P8. Then we've got Simon Weigang uh, just coming around the final corner now. And Esteban Gutierrez looks like he is probably going to get the last points position. Yes, he is because Courtois has already finished the race. Esteban Gutierrez from starting right at the back of the field finishes in P10. And wow, what an end to the race that was, Matt fascinating it would have been good to have some sort of live penalty counter because there were so many as they all came across the line but a uh, fantastic drive from obviously Danny Perezne at the front I think my standout was Tom 97 who had a fantastic qualifying and then finished up in P5 I think it was if I'm not mistaken but yeah battles up and down the field and that's what we like to see F1 esports drivers you've got real life racing drivers you've got content creators and you've just got a few plebs as well it's awesome Tom 97 doing what you basically said at the start of the of the stream. Be consistent, keep it clean, keep your nose out of everyone else's business and you will get a good result. And there he did, he finished in P5. Lando Norris as well, great result for him. Started P19 on the grid, worked his way up into P6. If anyone was watching his stream instead of this one, I mean, um, not too happy about that. You should have been watching ours, but you would have had an absolute fantastic race uh, watching on board with Lando Norris and I don't blame you for watching that one going through the the uh, actual race standings then because obviously all the penalties that came through formula danny as daniel berezne finishes the race and gets the race win here so beyond the minute in second then we have hypers in third james baldwin finishes today's race in fourth with tom 97 a great performance from him in p5 lando norris from 19th finishes in p6 with tiro limitless just getting benjamin daly at the line in p7 with tmm marduk in eighth then we have simon vigang in ninth with Esteban Gutierrez getting the final points position. Thibaut Courtois, unfortunately, not getting into the points here today. Great performance from him, though, in P11 with Super GT in 12th. Jimmy Broadbent 
finishes today in 13th with Ryan Tavita in 14th. Stoffel Van Dorn, uh, he had a really good start, but unfortunately got held up in a lot of battles. Finishes way down in P15. Arava had a great battle with Sasha Fenestraz. He finishes in 15th. Then uh, you have, um, sorry, Arava in 16th. Sasha in 17th. Louis Delatraz, great kahunas on him, but unfortunately finishes down in 18th with Willany in 19th. Not finishing last, which is what we like to see, Matt. And finally rounding out the order with AR12 Gaming. What a race. What a race and what a way to round that up. And we're both happy because Will and E is not last. And that's what we like to see at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, he's good. he might turn up again if, if there ever <laughs> is another one because uh, he didn't finish last. He kept his blushes. He was running in 10th or 11th at one point. So he was absolutely <laughs> flying. But yeah, it's great to see these guys racing, you know, wheel to wheel, sometimes off off the track, sometimes in the wall. But that was the beauty of, of this race. It's not not a serious, serious event. We haven't got 20 of the best drivers. We've got 20 drivers from all parts of the world. And it's awesome to see. Exactly. You know, we've got people from, we've got a Real Madrid goalkeeper, for goodness sake. You know, the, the, the field, the class of field was obviously definitely mixed and we had some good running up at the front. Uh, but we had, like you say, some standout performances as well. Tom 97 doing a great job finishing in P5. Lando Norris from the back of the grid, finishing in P6, keeping it clean, doing a great job. And, uh, and then you have people like Arava at the back, you know, putting on a show. He may not have had a great race, but he put on a show, having a battle with uh, Sasha. And um, I think that battle went on for most of the race. So very well done to everybody in this field. I think they can all be happy with how that turned out. Unfortunately, with some of them, you know, there were incidents and they did get caught up with it. And it would be interesting to see after the stream to uh, really see what went on and maybe even talk to some of these guys um, as the stream goes on. Uh, we will get some post-race reaction from some of the guys. So who do you want to talk to, Matt? <laughs> Apart from the obvious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'd love to speak to Will and E. I want to know him. <laughs> I want to know his actions. I want to know exactly what he's been up to in these uh, 29 laps of the Australian Grand Prix. But, you know, obviously Lando, I want to speak to the race winner, Danny Beresne. But I, I guess it was quite a boring race for him. I just want the ones that have been involved in all sorts. Esteban Gutierrez from the back of the field all the way up into the points. All sorts of dramas and stories. Knowing Danny Beresne, he is, uh, he's probably just singing to himself. I mean, that's basically all he does uh, when he's on his own anyway. He's just singing to himself. And I can imagine the team radio between him and his teammate, which was uh, James Baldwin, was just probably Danny singing constantly. So I can, I can imagine he didn't have a quiet time. He was just enjoying himself, enjoying the moment, racing with real life drivers, of course, for him as well. He's a huge F1 fan, like you say, with most of these people. And, um, and yeah, so all, all these guys having good races and um, just enjoying being out there with the guys that are out on track. Of course, you know, like you say, Lando Norris, Stoffel Van Dorn. So, um, yeah, very, very interesting race and quality throughout the field. And I think it's safe to say that. Uh, who, is your, who is your underdog performance? Uh, Tom 97. I didn't expect that from him. I think he did a 19-5 uh, in qualifying. And he very much was up there. You know, he's beaten a couple of F1 esports drivers, I believe. And, you know, very impressed from him. Uh, you know, another one, obviously, Lando starting 19th, finishing 6th. What a drive from him, especially with all the issues that he was going through as well. Uh, and then Esteban Gutierrez, as I mentioned, you know, he was at the back of the field and he finished 10th. Um, there's, there's a variety. Obviously, we missed a lot purely because we can't watch everybody at exactly the same time. Uh, great to see uh, Ben and uh, Lando uh, sort of, uh, racing wheel to wheel. And then you have uh, Limitless getting involved as well. So there was lots of battles and uh, I'm sure we missed probably 90% of it. We, we must also add that uh, there will be a highlights video out later on, as well as uh, the POVs of, of most of the people involved in team radio videos. So uh, later on, we will be able to see what exactly happened to everybody in those races. Unfortunately, like you say, um, we, we didn't have the, we didn't have the, um, the actual point of view from everybody. We didn't get to see what exactly happened with the crash, but uh, yeah. It was, it was a good race, and, and I want to thank you for, for joining me on it. We're actually going to jump into uh, a call with Lando at the moment, so I'm going to have to ditch you for now, but I will be back, and I'll speak to you That's shortly, okay. Matt. Okay, don't miss All me right. too much. Have fun. Okay. <laughs> right. Hello, hello, everyone. How, hello, how hello, was your race? Hello, You're live hello. on the stream at the moment, so how was, how was everyone's race? Wait, we're live? We're, we're live. We're all live. <laughs> oh, my God, we're live. I've always wanted to go live. <laughs> we're streaming, streaming. Um, did you watch my race? We were watching your race. Yeah, we were watching it with. Um... Did you see? Did you see my lap one? Uh, no, we didn't actually see lap one. We were watching the front, unfortunately. But you just flew oh, through man. the field at the start. 
Everyone just crashed. I don't think I made one overtake. I think everyone just crashed ahead of me. It was like, uh, you know, when Jesus parts the sea. So it was pretty much like... <laughs> Hayden. Yes. Do you see what happens when I get a clean race and it's not squad sprint? P5, very impressive. But I'm uh, sorry, I just want to speak to Lando at the moment. Oh, sorry, Tom. So all right. Just yeah, get that out was of good it. I wish they do the set, Tom. My, my, my engineer didn't tell me. He put me on mediums for the start of the race, so he's fired. But we thought you um, were going for a, slip, a split <laughs> strategy. That's what we thought you were going for on the comms. Well, I'll now I'll decide. I'll take that and I'll, <laughs> I'll agree with my engineer. I mean, but, it worked uh, out well. No, for I you. didn't. I, I think it did. I think it did. But um. I was, I don't know, I felt like I was really slow, but everyone seemed to be struggling the same amount. And uh, I just had to get that one overtake on the last few laps, which I managed to do, because he was on the medium and I was on the hard. So I think that strategy actually got me that one more position. So I was happy. It was a great battle. We were watching throughout the battle between yourself and uh, Tim Amadu, of course. Ben, you yeah. are also in this course if you want to if you want to chat as well. But uh, that was a great battle. Sort of, It looked like you were going to get the job done because you were on the better tyre than him because unfortunately his mediums were longer going longer than yours so it looked like he yeah. had tire wear but longer then he just managed to hold on out of nowhere but great defensive moves he tried to sneak it up the inside i think it was in towards the chicane <laughs> before the long yeah. panda and you just shut the door straight away on him that was an absolutely fantastic <laughs> defensive move it was good racing i think yeah it was side by side racing. for like half a lap i kept thinking he was going to shun into me but uh he didn't so. No, it was good fun, actually. Yeah, better that, than, was, uh... that was very, very intense. <laughs> Here he is. Here I, he I was is surprised, I'm not going to lie, when you moved like last minute on one of the straights. I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is, yeah, uh, but I, I moved before playing. you moved. It was, you know, within within the rules. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, it maybe was right. a bit late. But... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was never going to beat you anyway with the mediums, but I'll take it. <laughs> no, but it was close. I mean, I only went, I think, two laps longer than you did on the when you were on the softs. And then all my, my, my chat were yeah. telling me to go on to the softs for like pit quite late on the medium and then go on to the soft really late. But um, I, had no, I didn't know how I to change my tires to the softs, so I had to go on to the hards. Um, but I yeah, think I, I like, only got you because they lasted going? a bit longer than the, than the medium. So. Ben? Anything yeah, consistency say? was really good. <laughs> and uh, I was very surprised when you came in for hards. I was like, oh, this could get tasty again. Because uh, well, you thought soft, I was going to have me for. I thought yeah, you were the going yeah, I thought you were like in the early laps. No, but I didn't know how to change them. I didn't know what my engineer was doing actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely have no, words after, game. won't you? Yeah, congrats to Danny because uh, he looked like he was in a league of his own. Yeah, I think I think Danny was probably Danny, singing. Thank you. No props. I felt like I would have had you with a few more laps, if okay. I'm honest. Yeah. Good uh, yeah, tire was... management for the end of the race. No, it was more that you were almost gonna lap me, and um, I would have taken you out. So then I would have got you. That was actually the plan to be on Lando's stream, that... but I, I still oh, wanted yeah. to win, so I wanted to do both. Right, we're you, dropping you out stream. We're gonna go talk to Tibo yeah. Courtois. So well done, everyone. We'll speak to you later if we want you. GG. So See well you. done. See you in a Thank bit. You. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks guys. Tibo Courtois, P11. Unfortunately, just outside the points. You're live on stream at the moment, but a fantastic race. I think a lot of people were unsure of how well you're going to do, not really knowing about um, the sort of league racing history. How was that race from your perspective? Yeah, it was quite uh, good and quite fun. Uh, the only issue was I got from PS4, so my wheel uh, felt very much different because I, I didn't uh, make the right setup, I think, with the, with the wheel. So uh, that was a bit annoying sometimes, but in general... It was a good race. I had some nice overtakes and good battles, so yeah, it was fun. It, it looked very enjoyable. We, we watched your uh, battle with Super GT at the end. When you say you had the wheel, was it? Did you have it stuck on like uh, 360 degrees steering? Where it's like you're steering. It's like 900. Sorry, where you're like steering a bus. Is that no, you had it off? I, I have no idea because on the PlayStation it's really easier to set it up, yeah. and it felt like there it feels I have grip on the on track, but. Uh, now it was like my wheel was loose and was not feeling really the grip or when I was going over curbs. So it was annoying sometimes to feel the, yeah, when I was losing the traction or not. So, uh, but yeah, it was okay. Saw a lot of incidents happen at the start. I think you got caught up with one of them where a lot of people were spinning round. Was, am I right in saying that? It's quite hard because we didn't get many replays. So we were kind of watching it live and as it was happening and trying to jump on. 
Yeah, there were some incidents. Uh, I thought ghosting was on and one I I had to avoid three people crashing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I didn't know how the damage was, so I didn't want to get a, a first round uh, retirement. So I was just like a bit careful in the beginning, and then I was trying to push. And yeah, it was it was nice to be P11. Like I didn't expect that could be that high, and I'm sure I can get faster. So if I get a, an invite the next time, I'm happy to compete again. I mean, it, we will happily have you back again. You did a fantastic race. Uh, P11, you. you can definitely be proud of. And hopefully, I want to see you in the points next time around. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm gonna on, instead of PlayStation, I'm going to work a bit on the PC and, and see uh, if I can uh, get some tips as well from Jarno and JD. But they helped me already, so thanks to them as well. Well, well I'm sure I'm... both of those guys will be happy to, to race with you a lot more. You have a lot of racing history together anyway, don't you? Yeah, I, you know, I follow them both on uh, Twitter. So we, we had already some talks and uh, some ha help with setups on around the uh, other tracks. So yeah, it's it's nice to to get a bit in their world as well because uh, I like it as well the esports and uh, not only Formula One, but that's what I'm playing most at this time is the Formula One. So yeah, it's really fun. Well, we're gonna we're gonna drop out now. So thank you very much for talking to us. It was a great race to to watch you, and we hope to see you again next time. So well done. Thank you very much for the invitation. See you. No problem. Right, who are we going to talk to next? Who are we putting? Who? Are... We're with Formula Danny. Hello, Daniel Bresne. Hello. Well done. Race winner for the first of these races. The not the Oz Grand Prix. How was that race from yours? It was just a walk in the park for you, wasn't it? Uh, actually it was not, uh, these guys were pushing quite hard to be honest, uh, at the end they could keep me up but I managed my tires pretty decently so by the end of the stint I could break DRS and from that point doing another lap, staying out of traffic, it helped me massively to, to get the momentum ahead of them, but to be honest I was really happy two minutes ago, I'm already just a little bit mad by my maximalism, I said shadow play to instant recording except of uh, sorry to instant replay except of recording so i don't have my own board saved and i actually just wanted to do uh, some kind of highlights of my driving racing and as proper formula one driver so i don't have any recording of the race but but the experience ah, okay. is there in my mind and it's yeah. crazy the amount of people tuned in i saw from streams is also crazy so thank you all for your for your massive support it means a lot to us it means a lot to me personally as well you always find a way to make make things all nice and cheery at the end, don't you? You're just such a humble humble race winner at the end of the day. Let's talk more about your race though. Um, started off like you say it was quite difficult. You had uh, Jana Watmir and also Hypers very much on your tail, uh, but you got quite lucky, I suppose, when the pit pit stop phase. You pitted at the right time. Great strategy from yourself, and you just jumped um, Tiamat Marduk and Lando, um, whilst Jana Watmir and Hypers got helped up. To uh, held up by those guys so you must have been very happy looking back at those two and just seeing you know being able to drive off into the distance from there yeah to be honest it was very good i saw the full battle of ben and lando norris as well coming out of the pit and i i watched more to the back than to the front because come on first <laughs> i'm i'm on the stream of lando norris and ben as well but secondly it was such an amazing battle it went on like two sectors very fair, very clean, uh, from my perspective at least. I don't know about them. It's just so amazing to mix both the virtual and the real world. I mean, we only always dreamed dreamed of that. And, and now we are playing against these guys who, who draw real fast cars. That, that the maximum what a, what a car can produce, a Formula 1 car, uh, Van Dorn, Norris, and, and all these guys. So it's, it's just a great opportunity. I'm, I mean... Double feelings in some way because I'm not happy about coronavirus. I'm a huge Formula One fan myself as well. So I, I just want to see the real teams and cars and guys racing out there as soon as possible. But at least uh, from this negative, we, we, we did some kind of positive results at the end of the day. So, that, so that's not bad. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I think you agree with me when we both hope that anyone uh, currently suffering with it has the speediest of recoveries. Uh, we're going to leave you now, but before I go, are you going to sing us? Have you got any songs to sing us before before we go? 
uh, if is there is this a championship, by the way? Because is it, if it is, then I want to sing "I am the champion" at the end of it. So I, I keep so you're gonna, you're keep, gonna keep back it. singing okay. until I really win. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> wait until until the end of the season, and if you are champion, for you to sing that. Okay. Thank you very Thank much you. for talking to us. Well done on the race win, and uh, I'll speak to you later, big boy. Thank you. All right. Who are we on to next? Esteban Gutierrez. How are you doing? You, you may need to unmute your mic. <laughs> or should we go speak to Stoffel? Stoffel's available. Should we come back to Esteban and go to Stoffel? Matt? I can't. I think go to Stoffel. <laughs> Had a few technical issues. What a surprise. Stoffel van Dorn. Great race at the start. Moved up a lot of positions. Are you there? More technical. Who, should we, who else have we got? Who else can we talk to? Ben? Ben! Ben! Ben, come hello, back. Hello. hello, hello. Wow, what a <laughs> it's race. It's a game of musical chairs. You've got to come and find <laughs> I me. I know, got to try and find everyone. Uh, what a race that was from yourself. Uh, battling with Lando Norris, F1 driver. And not just, you know, one overtakes, see you later, or he overtakes you, see you later. Lots of wheel-to-wheel -wheel -wheel battles between the two of you. You must be absolutely ecstatic at the moment. I Honestly, Hayden, I couldn't even believe it. <laughs> uh, it's just absolutely incredible. It was not only just that, but it was a big psychological battle as well because he was on the hards, and I knew he was going to come back at me later, so I just had to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. The gap was around two seconds. Got in DRS, and then that's when the fireworks <laughs> happened. And, uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle. I tried to leave him as much space as possible while still being aggressive. Um, but yeah, he just kept I mean, me in the I end mean, there. You did a great job out there. He definitely slammed the door on you at one point, didn't he? When uh, you were right up, you're going for the overtake up the inside, and he was just like, no, you are not coming through. Here. so that was that was incredible between the both of you but uh, it was a solid performance and it was just a shame unfortunately with the tire strategy not really going in your favor at the end um not being able to hold on but you did a stellar job i mean going up against Tyrrell limitless as well who we both know is is a competitive league racer you know being an f1 esports so that must have been quite interesting for you as well to go wheel to wheel with someone that you know so well having behind you and lando norris ahead of you <laughs> unique <laughs> scenario i mean there i've thought about it there's nothing more in that race i could have done i was you know cutting the court i was cheesing the corners i was i saw a lot of everything. corner cuts from you <laughs> by the end of that race the amount of um the amount of warnings and penalties that you just kept on getting unfortunately just trying to do everything to hold on was brilliant the uh the corner cuts at the end there i think it was when he got in front of me is when I was like, okay, like my tires are gone here. I've got to do something to like stay in the fight. And so the corner cuts came out and <laughs> I went from no penalties to like nine seconds worth in about three laps. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> too sure whether you had any before. So um, that's why I was getting a bit worried that you were getting close to the disqualification because that was the last thing that we wanted to see. You know, trying to, trying to have that battle with Lando and then losing completely out on, on eighth position. But... Yeah, definitely a great job from yourself. Um, what was the probably the highlight, other than batting with Lando, of course, what was the highlights? Because, you know, it was an interesting race for yourself, I suppose. Um, the highlight, I guess, maybe on a personal level, just kind of not cracking under the pressure, <laughs> uh, not spinning out or whatever. Um, with so many eyeballs watching and just being able to keep it consistent despite the tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, it's hard to say, like, the the race itself was the highlight, like, yeah. Yeah, it was a good race, and you, 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 you put on a great performance at the end of the day, and I think a lot of people were very entertained, and, and a lot of your fans as well will be definitely very proud of how you did to not only, once again, just like you are doing in Squad Sprint, going up against uh, esports guys, but also now F1 drivers, I mean, you can add that to your CV. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Like, we all just wanted to have a bit of fun and uh, put on a good show, and uh, hopefully, we delivered today. You certainly did. It was a great, it was a great view to watch, and um, I think that's a great way to sort of leave this on. So, thank you very much for, for talking to us. Um, we're going to go find no someone else. We've got Arav in this call now, so uh, maybe we're going to speak to Arav. Hello. 
<laughs> an interesting race, safe to say well, look, for I, you. Look, me and me and Nick gave a very authentic Ferrari twenty twenty <laughs> experience. I think that's what we'll say. Uh, uh, no, I mean I had a great start. I actually jumped Ben off the line because I don't know what on earth a start he had. I don't know what went on there, but I jumped Ben and it was looking good until the brake zone in turn one where I was just going forwards as I was braking because I think Louis Delatra has just punted me off basically at turn one. So that was uh something and then uh and then i just got into two further crashes which the third one was very unavoidable because simon basically spun it somehow and was basically t-boating me into the apex so <laughs> that was unfortunate yeah. but there were glimpses of some real surreal moments of just like racing like Stoffel van dorn and Daryl traz we, being we in a saw that you were racing with uh sasha um yeah F3, that was the main fight Japanese the F3, and it was back and forth it wasn't just like 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 i was saying about ben and lando it wasn't just you know one of you gets past that's it it was back and yeah. forth constant overtaking it was yeah really i think i was fighting him watch. for like Fifteen laps, I think fifteen laps, and yeah. then we're like going at it, basically. I like basically just swapping positions because he was on the mediums, I was on the hard. So I think it was a case of I was keeping up with him, but I was making mistakes. So that's how I was falling back behind. So uh, yeah, we had like one lap where we went basically side by side for like half a lap. So that was pretty sick. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, what more can I say? Hopefully next time around, it's maybe a better race for Ferrari. Yeah. Well. Got to keep out um, the trouble. I mean, it was unfortunate for you because there was a big pile up. Uh, and you unfortunately involved in that and then of course yeah. you're trying to get back away again and your wheels are spinning up and you go around the next corner and they just slip away from you unfortunately yeah, that's yeah. What, what cost you cost totally, you too yeah. much at the end but of the day but... and nonetheless a funny as hell I mean the funniest moment was honestly the start of the race the formation lap where Lando honestly just I, I thought better of an F1 driver to know what, how a formation <laughs> lap was he just sent it and overtook all of us so that was quite funny just to see him pop out of nowhere um so yeah all very good fun you know sick to be able to share a track with so many cool uh you know personalities drivers and also youtubers and esports drivers so uh, did you have much experience of racing with lando uh, I, I don't know how your race went i on. no i you? actually i although my teammate nick did he had lando behind him and the second he realized that and the second he told me that he binned it <laughs> so the pre the pre if you don't think there's pressure racing an f1 yeah. driver there very much is um yeah and he buckled straight away <laughs> <laughs> one thing i think you did see as well is uh you were following will and e as he was yeah. going for the overtake on oh, Sasha I, when he went up the inside yeah yes. yeah we saw him go oh, up the inside i was the, literally I, I, I was on the stream i went go for it send it up the inside and he full yeah. on sent it so fair play to him fair play to him for oh, going for i that saw move. that i was like surely not surely not and he just sent it and i was like well he's <laughs> Fair play, but he's got it all wrong. <laughs> it was brilliant, brilliant stuff from him, to be fair. We need to yeah, no, talk I, to that him. That was a good moment. Yeah, point. I mean, props for Will to try for trying the dive. <laughs> a hats off to him. Are we going to get Matt back in here? Is Matt. I am here. Matt is here. Okay, Matt is here. All right, Matt, have you got any questions for, for our guys? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been sat here. Sat here listening to, to my voice for too long. Uh, do I have any questions? Hmm. Arif. Yes. You got your elbows out. Talk to <laughs> yes. Me. Well, Lovely. I got elbows out kind of because I got fly kicked in the face a few times in that race. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, there was both both crashes I had. I couldn't really do much because I was just basically right there as they spanned or had their incident. So I kind of just co got collected. Then. Yeah, then had some yeah some elbow action with uh, Sasha at the end with, in the Williams. So is, uh, is Esteban there or is his phone not working? Esteban, are we going to go? you guys. See oh, Sasha's Sasha, Sasha's joined. Hello. Yeah. Anis. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Good. Well, how was your oh, race, Sasha? I think Esteban. Or Esteban. Both of you, how are your how are your races? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll let Esteban explain you his first. <laughs> Esteban, you went from back of the grid. Uh, yeah, it was really eventful. <laughs> <laughs> a lot a, a lot of things happened. I I, I I barely remember what happened. <laughs> it was you had the problems race, in qualifying, didn't you? Sorry? You had the problems in qualifying. Yeah, my screen went completely black. And suddenly I appeared back on the track to disqualify. So that was a bit strange. But uh, yeah, it was... Um, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I was P8 before that happened. I think I had a good pace. But yeah, it was also good fun to start from the back and get into the top 10. I mean, it was an interesting race for you. I think you just sort of kept it clean, kept your nose out of uh, out of any issues really, and just 
managed to get P10 at the end of the day from P20. Kept out of the carnage that was going on. Had a little bit of an incident with uh, the Renault driver of Simon Vigang, but he was very nice to sort of let you back and have that position. Yes, he did, he did apologize and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's good racing and sometimes these things happen, but uh, no, it's, uh, it's good to, to receive his uh, in the medals. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining. Um, hopefully, we will see you in the in in the next one. And um, yeah, thank you, thank thank you for racing today. Yeah, thank you. Keep me posted. We will. We will certainly will. Thank Don't you worry, Esteban. Organizing and, and good job uh, to everyone. Really, really great group. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esteban. Thank you for taking part. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Let's quickly move on to to Sasha now before we wrap up. Uh, interesting race for you. You know, batting with Arab <laughs> at the back. Yeah, it was, um, I mean, it was good fun, of course. Uh, first of all, congrats, guys. It was an ama amazing event. Um, and yeah, it was it was good fun. I mean, started from the back, stayed at the back, but it was just, uh, yeah, good good fun to battle at the end with this, uh, with the Ferrari, uh, kind of battling for for that oh, 17th position. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just at the end. Um, but what, yeah, I mean, it was kind of a clean start. Just, just had a contact with, the, with uh, both Mercedes. And then, uh, yeah, just dropped back and kind of did my race into it. So um, no, it was very good fun. And, um, yeah, looking forward for the next one with a little bit more training, a little bit would be, yeah. would be better. <laughs> we'll have to get you back on and uh, let you prove what you've got, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit late, a late call, let's say, around <laughs> a couple of hours ago from testing. So, um, yeah, but uh, no, great, great event. I think uh, everyone enjoyed here and um, I think it's something... Uh, that everyone is looking forward to in the in the future to have more more races like this. Well, thank you all for for joining us, and thank you all at home for joining us on the stream. We're going to wrap up now, so I'm going to just Matt. Thank you very much for um for for being here with me. You know, being my co-commentator, you did a fantastic job. As wherever Matt's gone. Oh, you cut out. I was oh, being sorry. moved. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, you did a fantastic job. So thank you very much for um for being my co-commentator alongside. Thanks for having me. me. We we'll have to we we'll have to get you back on the next one. I think a lot of people enjoyed having you having you on board with us. So so thank you. Yeah, so much it'd be for awesome. Just just wanted to quickly say like it's been an amazing day for for motorsport really, hasn't it? It's been so amazing to see, you know, Veloce and also you know we are the race. Both of these guys putting together such an amazing show to to fill the void that we that we had, you know, where no motorsport was happening. So many things have been cancelled, and it's just been a nice heartwarming thing to to be involved with. So. Yeah, thanks to all the team behind the scenes for making this happen and bring on the next one. Yes, I fully agree with everything you say and just want to say as well uh, to anyone that is suffering, we hope that you have the speediest recovery and uh, you're back on your feet as soon as you possibly can. Um, but before we wrap up, this, uh, don't forget to follow the Veloce team on all of the uh, Twitter and Instagram and, and Twitch and YouTube and all that stuff. And also give Matt a follow as well. You know, he did a good job today. Definitely give Matt... <laughs> Uh, the old follow but uh, we're going to wrap this up now we've got a big announcement coming over I've just been told we've got a big announcement uh, on, on, on the Twitter so don't forget to, to check that out but thank you everyone for watching we're going to sign off now uh, and until the next one just keep your eyes posted we've got some stuff special coming along goodbye <laughs>